Hello everybody, welcome. It is Wednesday and another Wednesday means it is Wednesday at seven with the Wexford Stamper. I hope everyone is doing well. And today is launch day for our new mini catalog. I hope everybody who um, was ready to order today got some great goodies. You can post if you'd like and let me know what things you got today. Sadly, after all my preparation and all my talk about that bag of bones suite, there are products in that suite that are not available until September 11th. Okay, so I'm so sorry about that. Demonstrators really don't have any power over what gets pulled and what doesn't. We were not aware that at the beginning of the um, launch that there would not be many of the products. So I also had some challenges with my All About Autumn card kit. The paper was not available. So I'm having to wait and postpone those um, kits, getting my kits out. So I apologize to all my kits kit people today as well. I'm so sorry about that and um, I will get it out as quickly as I can and I will stay on my demo website and watch to see if they receive the um, Halloween product early and I'll let everybody know. So I hope everybody's doing well. I see Cheryl and Deb and Mary and Leo and Ann. Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Now, today, I am allowed to open the catalog right in front of your very eyes. And if you have your catalog nearby, the next few weeks, I will be working with the All About Autumn Suite. This is a really, really beautiful suite, perfect for the change of seasons, perfect for any kind of car. You don't just have to make Thanksgiving cards with this. Just gorgeous, gorgeous cards. This is on page 42 and 43 in the new mini catalog that just launched today. So let me go ahead and take a little bit of time to let you see some of the new product. All right. Um, the bundle is called Autumn Leaves Bundle, and it is a photopolymer stamp set. And this is the stamp set that comes with it, all right, called Autumn Leaves. I'm so glad that Stampin' Up! finally gave the name of the bundle and the name of the stamp set the same name so we don't have to go crazy trying to figure out which is which. So the name of the stamp set is Autumn Leaves and the name of the bundle, Autumn Leaves. And the name of the dies, Autumn Leaf Dies. Oh, you're not kidding. I might have to try and make you something, Christine, give you some ideas. Yes, a pretty Thanksgiving place setting marker would be a great idea. I love the way you think, girl. So this is the dies that go with the set. It has lots of great leaves, and I love the veins that you can put in. You can add the veins to the leaves just to give it a little more dimension, and there are some great little labels on this as well. All right, the also they have this pretty, pretty ribbon and um, it is a combo ribbon. You have the natural ribbon and then you have like a metallic copper ribbon, which is really pretty. So, oh, the colors are just amazing. And then here is the cute little dimension, oh, let's see what they're called, adhesive back speckled dots. And they come in the um, granny apple green, moody mauve, um, copper, clay, and I don't know what the last one is, but they're um, the same colors that are in the paper. Now, the paper is really amazing, and I'll go ahead and show you that right here since I don't have a picture there. But what's very cool about the paper, and you'll see it when I'm making my projects today, that 
one side of the paper is a photographic um, image. So that you have images of pumpkins and fall landscapes and dry leaves and sweaters and that kind of thing. It's so pretty. This is six by six paper. And the other side is a coordinating color with some of the copper foil. So it's just really, really beautiful, beautiful paper. And then there's an additional pack here, which is the I oxidized copper specialty paper. And I'll be showing that during the course of the next few weeks as well. So it's just a beautiful, beautiful fall suite. And I want to share some great projects with you in the next couple of weeks. And maybe you'll want to give this suite a try. Okay, let's go ahead and keep moving on. Today's projects are going to be this cute little box. Let me put it up toward the camera. And it slides and it fits three Ferrero Rochers in there. Okay. And it comes with the, I use some of the metallic foiled copper paper there. And then I use some of the great natural ribbon. So this is a real fun, easy to make. Now you don't have to put Ferreras in there. You can put whatever you like, but I just think it's a beautiful presentation. And hey, Chris, this would be a great Thanksgiving place setting marker. You could put their name right on there. That would be a great idea. That would be their dessert. How about that? And then here is the card that I'm going to make with it as well. And here you can see a piece of that photographic paper. It's like an aerial view of a bunch of pumpkins. Just so, so pretty. And you can also see here that I have, I use some of the foiled paper to make a little, the veins in the uh, larger leaf. So there's so much, so much so many options with this, but this is super pretty. Love it. Love the mixed fonts on the uh, sentiments as well. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. We'll go ahead and make the box first. Now, what I did with this box, since the recipient's gonna be doing a lot of, of sliding in and out, I made it a reinforced box. So it has a double so walls on it, and I'll show you how easy that is to make. And then this is a, the slide is also made of cardstock with um, the DSP on all four sides. All right, and as always, there will be a PDF tutorial that you can download from my blog that will have all the product and all the dimensions for both of today's projects. And my blog is www.thewexfordstamper.com blogspot.com. So head over there, lots of great projects to look at. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. That's enough talking for one day. Okay, now for the treat box, we're going to start with a piece of pecan pie. This is a new neutral. This is one that from the color refresh. This is called pecan pie or pecan, whatever you say. I say pecan down south, it sounds a little different, but we'll go with it. All right, and this measures nine by six and a half. Okay, you're gonna go ahead and grab your score, or you can also use your trimmer, okay? Cause you're able to use it for scoring as well. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to score at one and two and a half on all four sides. Let me show you how that works. First, let's do the one, okay? So we're gonna spin the box around and make sure we score at one inch on all four sides. Okay, so we go one inch on all four sides. Hope everybody's doing well. We are having some lovely days this week, not too hot. And this weekend we are going to the football game and the weather is only going up to 85, which is kind of cool for a football game. So we're pretty excited about that. 
low humidity too. So we've had some nice, nice low humidity, day, humidity days here in um, South Carolina. Okay, now I'm going around and scoring at two and a half. So one and two and a half. All right, so when you look at this, I'll bring it up here to the camera, okay? You have two lines coming from each side, okay? Now I'm gonna grab my phone folder and we're gonna go ahead and crease on all these score lines. Now, a reinforced box is a great idea for a box that's gonna get a lot of um, pushing and pulling like this one is or a box that's going to hold a lot of heavy stuff. So, and they can be made with any size box, any design. Um, you just have to add a second panel on all four sides. Okay, here we go. This is our piece. Now I'm gonna bring in a template. And now you can see by looking at this, oops, this is not the right template. This is another box. Oops, all right. Um, no, this is right. Hello, I'm wrong. This is correct. I've been working on so many projects that I'm getting confused. This is the template for our box this evening. All right, let me get my scissors and you'll see how this comes together. Okay, when you fold the box together, these are gonna fold in and create a double-sided box on the long sides. And then these are gonna fold in and then fold down here. So you're gonna have double sides on the ends. And these um, tabs are just gonna fold in between those. So it's really a, a simple concept and really easy to put together. So let's go ahead and put my template here. You wanna hold it in a portrait position. We're gonna start on the far right, first vertical score line, and we're gonna go up to the second score line and cut that off. And you'll notice I did a little bit of a diagonal wedge there because that's going to tuck in to the inside of the box and I don't want it to be too close to the edge that it's going to interfere. Now let's turn it over here and do the same exact thing. Okay, so directly across we do the same thing. Okay, so we have that side finished. Hi Joanne, welcome. All right, now we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. On the right, we turned it, so we go up the first vertical score line to the second horizontal, and we cut it off, okay? Again, I did a little bit of a diagonal there. Okay, same here. We're gonna go up to the first score line, the second, horizontal score line and then cut across. So now we've created the reinforcement for that inside of the, the um, long sides of the box. Okay, now let's work on the ends. Okay, what we wanna do here, we're still holding it in the portrait position and we're gonna cut up through two horizontal score lines on both of these Okay, now these two here are gonna create the flaps that are gonna flap inside the box. So what do we need to do there? We need to cut off the small rectangle at the top and then we do our wedges just so everything doesn't get overlapping and tangled in there. Same thing over here on this side. We're gonna cut off that small rectangle at the top and then we're going to wedge. All right, now this we're going to keep because this is gonna fold inside, but we're just gonna give it a little haircut so it'll slide in a little better. Okay, now I'm gonna just turn the box and we're gonna do the exact same thing again. Okay, so we already did this one. We're gonna do the one at the bottom now. How do we do that? We're gonna cut up the vertical score lines to the second horizontal. We've created these two outside flaps. So we're gonna cut off the rectangle and then give our flaps a little haircut. Same thing over here, cut off that smaller rectangle, haircut. 
I need a haircut too. I haven't found a hair stylist down here yet. I've been just dragging my feet and I think it's the week I need to do that. We've been down here for over two months. My hair is like Rumpelstiltskin. So, um, all right, so there we have it. So it's pretty easy. It's not a difficult box to create, okay? Please let me know if you have questions as I'm moving along. I don't wanna move too quickly. All right, now, we're gonna leave it down like this on our workspace and I'm gonna put a little bit of glue, Tombow, on my flaps, okay? Just a nice light layer over my flaps. Okay, now we're gonna fold them in and create our box, all right? Gonna fold down the flap and tuck it behind the small side of the box. Hold it there. And then we're gonna tuck the other one inside. So they're gonna actually layer on top of each other. And that's okay, because it's giving the box even more, um, the box will be even more sturdy because there's actually going to be four layers on the ends. And I like that because this box is going to get a lot of action. All right, same thing here. I'm going to go ahead and fold back the small and tuck it behind the outside panel, lining up my fold and my edge. Okay, then this one going to tuck the same way. It's gonna layer on the one that you just placed and you wanna make sure you're lining up right here. Okay, what do you have left here? Well, you have these um, reinforced sides, okay? These are what's gonna give your box much more sturdiness. And what you need to do is you're gonna put a little bit of glue on each of these extra layers, okay? Then I'm gonna grab, this is the best way I've found, I'm gonna grab my bone folder, I'm gonna tuck the bottom one in, turn my box on the side, and then press it down with my bone folder so that we can get that glue to dry. And we want it to be nice and flat. So there you see, I've got that first side down. Can you see inside there? A little bit. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and do the same on the opposite side. Fold it in, take my bone folder, and just press and rub that down so it gets lots of good pressure and it's gonna keep that from popping back up. All right, last two, these are short sides. We're gonna push that down, bring in our bone folder, and give it a rub. Turn it upside down, last one. There you go, hooray, how easy is that? Very, very simple, and this box is very sturdy. If you're not gonna use it for your candy, you can use it for lots of other things that would be pretty heavy, pretty weighty. All right, I was lucky enough to go to the store today and I bought a few of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm, this one holds three. Now you are, they do come in packages of three. I found these at the store as well where they take, have three of them that are um, wrapped together and you can buy that. But hey, I have lots of projects in mind for both fall and Christmas so I thought I better get a whole box of Candy. What do you think? Was that a good good idea? All right, so there we have three of them in there. And I thought they're so beautiful for fall with their beautiful gold foil wrappers. I thought this was perfect. All right, so we've got our box and our treats in place. Now we're going to go ahead and make the um, sleeve that wraps around the box. Okay, let me move a little bit of my scraps here before we get started. And where's my trash? Here it is. Okay. Okay, let me 
do a check on my directions here. Okay, the box sleeve is made out of a piece of copper clay. Love this color. This is a great, great um, fall color. I think it would be great for any fall projects. It's a, a little bit red, and, but it's a beautiful, beautiful brown. I love it. Okay, so let's see. This piece measures four inches by six and a half inches. Okay, now we're gonna put it in my trimmer score, and we're going to score at one and nine sixteenths. Had to use some sixteenths here to get it to wrap nice and snugly. One and nine sixteenths, three and one sixteenth, but that's what's great about this. This one has sixteenths on it. And the sixteenths are the smallest little. Okay, then we have four and five eighths and six and an eighth. All right, very good. Now we are done with our scoring since it's just a sleeve, we're only scoring on one edge. And now I'm just taking my bone folder and folding on all the score lines. And you can already see what's happening here. Okay, it's making a little, I know, we're gonna have to make lots of chocolate boxes, Christine. I'm up for it, how about you? <laughs> so that is going to be my little sleeve, my slide sl slider sleeve, that's a great name. But before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and put on my designer series paper. And as I had mentioned to you, I picked paper that had that beautiful foiling in it. Here we go, it's right in here. So this paper is on the back side of the photographic paper. Some has the books, some has the cute little trees. This is more the photographs. It has a real, two pieces of it are like a bookshelf, which would be great, great paper for like a masculine birthday card or Father's Day or something like that. Okay, so let's go ahead. This is, the, we're just gonna go ahead and line those up on all four of those panels. Okay. So let's go ahead and grab my Tombow. Oh, look what I just did. How many of you guys do this? You put it on the wrong side. All right, we will have to have the bottom be plain. The Wexford stamper made a big boo-boo, but we're gonna move on because everybody makes boo-boos and we just figure it out, right? Okay, so that is gonna go underneath. So, all right. So the bottoms not of mine is not gonna have a piece of DSP. But yours will, because you will put the glue on the correct side of the paper, right? Okay, here goes number two right beside it. I've gotten myself some nice sticky fingers now. Those are always helpful during projects. And one more. I love this paper. It is the copper clay color. And then it has some beautiful copper foiling in it. Just really, really beautiful for fall. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and put a little bit of glue on this little half inch strip here. And that's how we're gonna put our sleeve together. We're going to fold it over and fold this side over and just press down until we get that where we need it. All right, there we go. So now we have our cute little sleeve and that just slides right on our box. Okay, there we go. How easy is that? Isn't that the best? I just love this. This is a fun, fun project. Okay, let's finish it off. Not much else left to do here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab some of my goodies out here. We're gonna need a 5 8 inch strip of Very Vanilla, and we're gonna need a little 
cute little maple. Well, I don't know this is maple. Which kind of leaf is this? Who's our, who knows what kind is this? Is this a poplar leaf? Because I know, I know it's not a maple leaf. Thanks, Chris. Help me with my leaves here, peeps. All right, so I'm gonna take this strip first and I'm gonna go ahead and stamp I'm thankful using early espresso because that's a great color. You don't want to use black as much as you like to use the dark browns on your cards for the fall season. Okay, there we go. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and grab our box and we're going to Next, bring in the natural ribbon that comes in the ribbon combo. Oak, it's an oak tree. Thank you. Okay, boy, I'm embarrassed, but you are right. Oak is correct. All right, so this is the um, ribbon that I'm gonna be using. Now, this ribbon is really wide. It's not that thick. It's a little bit like burlap, but still pretty smooth. But if you would make a bow with this, it would be real thick and bulky. So instead of making a full bow, I just kind of did a uh, little crossover knot. And I'll show you how I did that. Really, really simple. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take the um, box and I'm going to go ahead and bring in my ribbon making sure I have enough that way. And I'm going to leave it on the roll because that's an easier way to try to judge how much you need rather than cutting it off and then having so much to waste. All right, so there I just did an over under and we're gonna keep this over here on the edge and I'm just gonna kind of pull straight out to the sides and make this little flat piece there. Then I'm gonna just grab what we have here and bring in the two edges, trying to keep my finger on there so we don't have too much slipping. Bring the left hand side over the right hand side and then fold it under and up. And you wanna try and keep that knot as flat as possible. And if it doesn't flatten, just smush it. <laughs> That's my secret weapon. Okay, so then you have it tied with a really, really nice knot in the center like that, okay? Then you're just gonna pull on your ends and I just cut them on a little bit of an angle. Actually, what I do is I hold it at an angle from the box and then I cut a line that is parallel to my box and that makes the angle, all right? Let me show you here. I'm gonna hold my ribbon at an angle away from the box, but then I'm gonna cut into it parallel to my box edge. And that's what makes your bow look like that. So simple. All right, let's go ahead and finish up. We have the I'm thankful here, and I'm gonna go ahead and glue on my new found oak leaf. Yes, people. It is a new day. The Wexford stamp will learn something today. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and lay that just right beside the I'm thankful, just like that. Okay, turn that over, and I'm going to add some dimensionals. All right, I'm gonna move this down towards the end here since we wanna have a nice space for our sentiment. And I'm gonna remove the backs on the sentiment, on the dimensionals. Use my pick tool. Love this, they come off quick and easy. And I'm just gonna slide this under my knot until it gets to a place where the leaf is touching the bow, and then I'm just gonna lay it down. Okay, now on this one, you can kind of do it the way you want. 
On this one, I cut the sentiment strip shorter so there's no overlap there if you don't want it to be touching your ribbon. This one I left long and it goes under the leaf and then under the ribbon knot as well. So whichever way you like it, hey, you're making them, right? You're gonna make them the way you want. But these are really easy, very quick to make, would be great if you needed several for a Thanksgiving dinner, Chris. What a great idea. All right, so there is our candy treat boxes for the evening. Let's go ahead and make a card that coordinates. All right, here is our card. And we are gonna start with this pretty copper clay card stock. It's a brand new color, one of the in colors. Okay, and before we start adding our paper, I'm gonna do a little bit of tone on tone stamping. Haven't done this in a while, so I think I'm gonna do it again. I haven't done this in a long time. I'm gonna grab a sheet here for my work area so I don't get any ink on it. So we're gonna go ahead and take this um, image, which is just a set of leaves, and I'm gonna grab my copper clay ink and if you look here you can kind of see I stamped it around the edge I didn't really worry about stamping in the middle yeah tone on tone it just needed something so I really felt that that's a great idea but if you feel like you have an empty spot on a front of a card it's always a great idea to put in some tone on tone and you can even like stamp off and make it lighter whatever works for you Okay, so we're gonna just go ahead and I'm just gonna do some stamping around the edge. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and stamp off and then I'm gonna stamp on my paper. Okay, and I'm just gonna really worry about going around the edge. And I'll show you what I'm doing here to make it look a little more random is I'm turning my stamp so that the base where the two leaves touch every time it's going an opposite direction. So here I just stamped with it this way. So I'm gonna turn it this way, get my ink, stamp off, and then stamp on. Okay, so it looks a little more random if you turn your block. Okay, just turn, stamp off, stamp. Okay, now we're gonna turn the card this way and remember we just have to go around the edges because our paper is going to cover the center okay there is going to turn it again stamp here throw the bot throw the stamp no you don't want to do that all right now down the side again stamp off go there's no right or wrong way on this ladies you just kind of randomly stamp and it will come out gorgeous okay now here just the way I am there's nothing like going off the side of the paper and I like to have a little something that goes off so I just added that little one right there just because that's what I do. All right, and then finally, we'll put one more leaf in there. Okay, there we go. Now that is gonna add so much texture and interest to your card just by doing that. All right, let me go ahead and move this to the side here. And next, we're gonna bring in two panels here. This is a panel of Early Espresso and that is cut at three and a quarter by four and a half. And then we have this piece of designer series paper that's three by four and a quarter. And they just layer on each other and you're gonna have that little border around the outside. Now look here, this is another pretty one here. This is the pretty peacock paper with the 
um, copper foiling. So a pretty, pretty color. So it's not just the, the browns they have. They have the mauve and then they have the um, pretty peacock along with that foiling as well. So we're just going to go ahead and place that in the center, making sure that we have a little bit of an early espresso um, border around this side. Then we're just going to go ahead and pick up that stack, put some more glue on the back. That rhymed. And then we're going to, oops, I'm going to turn it this way. I think that looks better. I'm going to go ahead and place that right on the front of my card. Okay, making sure it's in the middle. I had a chance to move it since I'm using my Tombow. So there, you can see how that um, tone on tone stamping really, really steps up your card. Isn't that pretty? All right, now let's go ahead and bring in our last few items here. We're going to have this large maple leaf as part of our embellishment. And I'm going to put a, the veins die on here. Now here, if I can look up here, no, this is not a spider. This is actually the veins for the inside of the large maple leaf. Now very, very little, go very light on your glue here. You really don't want to have big blobs. So just a couple of spots. You don't have to go overboard. And then you're just going to lay that down on your card. Like that. Isn't that pretty? That just adds so much to your card. A little bit of sparkle never hurt, huh? All right. Now we have that and we have this. And so the last thing we need is our circle, two inch circle. And I'm going to grab my early espresso ink and our sentiment. And the sentiment is from the suite and it says autumn teaches us that change can be beautiful. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to kind of put that towards the top of the circle, not quite in the center, so it'll give us a little space on the bottom for our leaf. All right, now let's go ahead and put our last few things on here. Okay, I'm going to first put down our maple, our large maple leaf, and that's going to go flat onto the card surface. So we're just going to glue that down, okay, kind of going up from the bottom corner there on a diagonal. Okay, then we're gonna go ahead and grab our sentiment circle and some dimensionals. And that will go right on top covering up some of the leaf, just like that, okay? And then we're gonna add our final little leaf here on the bottom, and I noticed that it is too close to the bottom, so we're gonna pick this up. Today's been a plan B kind of a day, huh? I hope you guys have them too. And I'm gonna raise it up just a slight bit because it was too close to the bottom for the leaf to fit. Okay, now it's still too close to the bottom for the leaf to fit. We're moving on to plan C. Okay, luckily, I'm hoping luckily I can pick this up. It's making a mess of those veins under there, but thankfully they're not gonna show. Okay, and you won't tell anybody, will ya? Okay, good. All right, move it up there, Mom. All right, so let's go ahead and put it up there. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that it's right up at towards the bottom of that piece of designer series paper. I was just putting it on too low. If I would have just looked at my sample, I would have, wouldn't have had all that problem. All right, now we're going to go ahead and add, because there now is enough room for our cute little maple leaf. Okay, so we're going to put him right at the bottom there. 
You want to make sure he's all the way on the front of your card or he'll get smushed when he goes in the envelope. All right, to finish up, we're going to use some of the embellishments from the suite. These are called adhesive backed speckled dots. Really cute. Little matte dots with um, all the colors from the suite and then they have little speckles on them as, as, as well. So it really is a nice touch to your card. I'm gonna grab them and pull them out. And okay, I like to use the number I use, I always like to use odd numbers. <laughs> yep, hey, you gotta do what you gotta do, Ann, right? We are, all are here, our friends, we can all talk about our stamping disasters. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and grab some of these copper ones. These are so pretty. I'm gonna use my pick tool so that I can pick it up, and then I'm just gonna place them on here. I'm gonna place a granny apple green up here in the corner and let's place the what color is this where's my book i've got to find out what color this one is oh no wait maybe it's on the hair um it is not okay i'm gonna check hold on i'm gonna put that one right there let me get my catalog okay catalog where'd you go oh there you are I think they are very vanilla, okay? They're a little darker, but they're probably a very vanilla, maybe like a light copperish color, but they're not the shiny like the copper, but they all match. I'm, I'm thinking these are like a very vanilla version of the dots. All right, so that is my card for this evening. Okay, and you can't even tell I had to rip that sucker off three times, can you? No, of course not. And here's the box. Just love making these. These are so pretty and they come together pretty quick. You'd have to agree with that. So that is my project for this evening. Remember that you can get the PDF off my blog with all the dimensions. And I even include a template so you can see how to cut your box. Okay, so remember to start checking in your mini catalog the items that you want, okay? I know the Halloween stuff is not available yet. I was talking about that earlier, but they are saying September 11th. That should be ready to go. There's also the All About Autumn paper is not available, but that is a September 11th as well. And if I hear anything different, I will make sure I post on the business page. So thank you for joining. I hope you are inspired to give this box a try. Oh my gosh, Leo, you are a superstar. Great job. And I hope you're encouraged to um, give some of these projects a try and you can always post them on my VIP page. I'd love to see what you're working on right now. I'm getting really, really excited about the Christmas cards. I'm working on those, yeah. Yes, Mary, I sent it today. So it should be there within the next two or three days. And thank you so much for, for purchasing that. So I will be back next Wednesday for another project using the All About Autumn suite. So come on back next Wednesday and check me out. Take care and have a great weekend. Bye-bye now.